out. As you wish, sir. You seem to have grown even smaller, little mouse. The hell with you and your bullshit magic. A talking goblin, eh? Welcome to Ironsight Gaming. I'm Drew Bosley. Joining alongside me, as always, Nathan Quinn. Nate, what's going on? Oh, nothing, man. Ready to talk some Sticks Shards of Darkness. That's exactly what we're talking about today. Sticks Shards of Darkness by Focus Home Interactive. What do you think of Sticks? Man, it was a bit of a rough start. But I can now say that I really love the game and it's got me hooked. It's a slow progression in. It starts, man, it started off so flipping rough. I had a hard time getting started. <laughs> yeah. I just, it was just one fumble after another and of no fault of my own was the biggest concern. So when you start the game, you obviously start in a tutorial situation, but the simplest thing like grabbing from ledge to ledge doesn't work half the time. It still doesn't work out the time mid game. And I struggle. <laughs> yeah. That's probably my biggest complaint about the game. So before we get there, let's talk about what do you think of the story itself? So for those who don't really know the story, aren't very familiar with it, the basic premise of the story is that you are sticks, obviously, and <clears throat> you're on a hunt for an artifact. And in discovering the artifact, you realize that, well, somebody else takes it, and basically you want to seek vengeance on this guy because this guy fucks you over. He almost kills you or tries to kill you. Right. So basically Sticks, who's working together with this human, you guys are basically trying to help each other to get this artifact. And yeah. Yeah, the story behind Sticks is cool. Um, it comes down to do the final execution is where I seem to struggle. Cutscenes are great, graphics are great, environment is fantastic dude what a what a vision an overall vision of the world that sticks kind of traverses through it's freaking beautiful man and each environment's so different from one another you're not you're not stuck looking or in a map where you're just like oh man i've already seen this five times over yeah. no it's like you can pursue the mission just the way you like it they've designed the map so flawlessly in my opinion almost where it's like if you want to go in the you know in the building there's like freaking five ways to get in there if you want that is the best part about the game for me is that there is no limitation of okay your objective is here you are here point a point b and there's no variation between that there is point a but point b has c d e like it's just surrounded with how you want to see and how you envision getting in you can either go in through the rooftops sometimes through some windows underneath there's just it is almost endless and like all the characters or all the uh, enemies or whatever you don't have to kill them nope. they actually have stealth bonuses if you don't kill anybody where's the fun in that uh, for me i had 73 <laughs> enemies killed in mission two i don't think i left anyone a lot it's like screw that man yeah uh, especially after playing for honor and they have the whole parry system it's <laughs> kind of funny i was like kept catching myself trying to the parry system out. in sticks for me just doesn't work. Oh, okay, so yes, for me, like when I first started, I'm like, what the heck, man? What yeah. do I do? Where's the guidance? They had no tutorial on what happens. But, you know, kind of like most fighting games or any games with parry, you just kind of figure it out, I guess. Just pick it up, you right? Just, it's just like he has to be basically starting his swing and then you push X and then it works But basically if you miss it, you're gonna get slaughtered And it's almost like a one-hit kill kind of thing yeah. from the enemy. You don't stand much of a chance The basic idea is you're a goblin and the game is stealthy. You're supposed to play it stealthily Go in take out the enemies from behind or above or vice versa But you're not supposed to kind of go in and start being confrontational right from the get-go Your idea is to sneak in get your stuff and get out so one of the nice things, again, kind of about the story progression, or the mission progression, is, like you said, you're, you're stuck at point A, you have to go to point B, but they have all these different side quests that you can do too, mm. within each mission. Collectibles, mostly it's just collectibles as far as I've seen so far, or whatever, what I've seen. Yep. But still, you doing that gives you skill points, which then you can further upgrade sticks. And as far as I'm concerned, they have pretty good skill building tree. They have 
four or five different uh, it's like a skill wheel, trees. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a skill wheel, I guess you could say. Sure. So for me, I upgraded killing. <laughs> yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to die very fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's, oh, it's just, it's so cool. It's so rewarding, you know? And for me, like, I, I could have probably beaten a mission within a half hour to an hour if I just wanted to hammer it out. But I just, I kept catching myself trying different ways of killing everybody, yeah. you know, because they have diversion items. They have a whole crafting system so you can craft different things. Do you like the crafting system? I do. It's actually, it's, I mean, it's not like this is crazy and it's intuitive. not over intense by no. any means, right? It's, it's pretty simple. simple, but it's there and it's fun and it's, I don't know. It's nice. I, I kind of, for the first while, wasn't really using any of the abilities and any of the items, but then as yeah. I kind of got further along, I'm like, no, oh, I should try it out. And yeah, it's fun, man. You know, throwing a piece of glass over there, one guard searches it out, you spit in a food trough, then you yeah. see them eat it, and then they get poisoned and die. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You can go up top, shove a poison barrel, you know, on top of them. I like killed two or three guys at once because they all ran into the same spot. It it's has just... some cool effects, some cool elements to the game I really enjoy, but the AI for me is... <laughs> Wow, are they oh, I got some good moments you'll see on the uh, on the background for this. It is. But I crawled. They're very stupid. Oh, they're so <laughs> dumb. I crawled through this one area and I snuck into a window, dragged a guy through the window and killed him, right? I got spotted, which was fine. So the guy comes, jumps through the window, jumps right past me into a table and just continues walking and walking. I cannot kill him. He can't kill me. Oh, that's weird. And I'm just... <laughs> What is going on? So I just laughed and continued on with the mission. But this guy was there. Another time, too. I'm underneath these stairs. I pop out. The guy is walking through the stairs. Uh, just, there's just some technical glitches that brought me out of the experience, unfortunately, that shouldn't have been there to start with. It's unfortunate because everything else in the game is pretty solid, but the oh, AI is, man, they're... they're they were really stupid, man. They're like, dumb. They're, I'm talking like some serious tunnel vision. <laughs> I've had it, you know, they're like, literally, it's like, probably like two feet over, and they don't see the corpse, you know? It's yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, in my defense, or in their defense, I enjoyed that, because it's like, yeah, I don't have to reset. Well, <laughs> but, yeah. And uh, at the same time, it's like, it's a little less challenging. It's still a challenging game by all means. Like I, I kept resetting over and over again, but the AI are very, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> AI I'm smart. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're not the brightest <laughs> AI at all. All right, Nate, so what are you gonna give Stick Shards of Darkness? Honestly, man, just with all the technical errors and everything, I wanna give it an eight. Really, you're that high? I, I am. I friggin' I couldn't <laughs> stop myself, man. I like, I love that game. The, it, you gotta also consider the fact for everybody. I did not play the first one, so sure. I don't really have much to compare to. But there are lots of people that will be first comers into that series. So for me, being a first comer, I absolutely loved it. Rough beginning, but yeah. After I kind of fixed through the bumps and edges, it really was awesome, man. I loved it. To me, I am definitely lower than you. There are some technical glitches, and when you're playing something like Assassin's Creed where you can jump from ledge to ledge to ledge without a problem, and Styx has a hard time doing that. He jumps from one ledge, I see my grip, it's right there in front of me, I jump, <laughs> and I continue to fall off the edge. I'm like, this is ridiculous. To me, it's frustrating. I'm giving this seven. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. You can follow me on Twitter, at 4 Next Level Gamers. Nate, where can we follow you? Me, Doom Guy Parker 50. See you next time. What the? Nothing. <laughs>